First of all, this needs to be said. There never was a war. How can you say that, Bill? Well, a war is when two armies are fighting. Thomas Young, Iraq War veteran, is now writing a message to George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. I write this letter on behalf of husbands and wives who've lost spouses, on behalf of children who've lost parents, on behalf of fathers and mothers who've lost sons and daughters, on behalf of the uh, active duty soldiers and Marines who commit, on average, a suicide a day. I write this letter on behalf of us all. Your and your privilege and power and I'm asked the hollowness of your character. And for you, Miss Jane, and you, Mr. Bush, your cowardice sent hundreds of thousands of young men and women to be sacrificed in a senseless war. I write this letter because before my own death, I want to make it clear that I know fully who you are and what you are and what you've done. In our eyes, you were each guilty of egregious war crime, of plunder, and finally of murder. You know fully who you are and what you've done. You may have been justice, but in our eyes, you are each guilty of egregious war crimes, of plunder, and finally of murder, including the murder of thousands of young Americans, my fellow residents, whose future you stole after the element tax. I joined the army because I wanted to strike back to and kill some 3,000 of my fellow citizens. I did not join the army to go to Iraq, a country that had no part in the 9-11 attacks and did not pose a threat to its neighbors, much less the U.S. I did not join the army to liberate Iraqis or to shut down mythical weapons of mass destruction or to implant what you simply call democracy in Baghdad and the Middle East. I did not join in a way to rebuild the rank. Why you have come to this decision to end your life? Nobody figured out why I was in pain. The reason I decided to do this now is on one hand sick and tired of being sick and tired and on the other hand I don't want to watch my body waste away. They'd find, she would find a, a corner where she could feed him without being stared at. And sadly Thomas is not alone in his decision to end his life. He wants his life to be a stake to make a point. He wants people to see this. We don't see this. They are not seen. And we couldn't take pictures of the coffins. Suffer immeasurably all day, every day. He was suffering so much more than he was able to live or enjoy anything about his life. He says he's decided to end his life in May or early June. Culture is not your friend. 